Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 23 of the Dungeon Lore series. In this series, I hope to expand upon things you might not know about Final Fantasy XIV dungeons, as well as discuss their individual stories and lore. This episode's dungeon is the hard mode version of the Tamtara Deepcroft. The original Tamtara Deepcroft was built around the time when the Pajal held control over Gridania, and served as a catacomb for the more noble families and its servants. Many names were laid to rest here, and the resulting nature of the ether surrounding the place made it a hotspot for cults during the 7th Umbral Era. As we know, the Lambs of Dalimud made the place their home, triggering a response from Gridania to flush out the tunnels and deal with the mighty mind flare and other void scent called forth by the Lambs. As we can see here, the Deep Cross was revered as a place with a strong ties to the void, and hence was known as a place for rituals. Around the time that the now Warrior of Light took care of the tunnels, they were also tackling other problems for the major city-states at the time. The Pirates of Sestasha for Limsa Laminza, the Lambs of Dalamud for Gridania, finally the return of the Hecatonkaya giants wreaking havoc within Copperbell Mines. Although the Warrior of Light and his fellows were of course successful in their exploits, they were not the only group of adventurers trying to make their way in the world. Outside of Sestasha, we can see a small group of travellers who seem to be berating their conjurer friend. Avir, a gladiator and the leader of the group, wonders why Edda, the healer, could be so slow. Leovine and Pio Rayo, an archer and thaumaturge respectfully, laugh off the situation and mock Edda as she catches her breath. After this, the Warrior of Light, having cleared the pirates from their hideout, venture to Gridania and clear the Tamtara Deepcroft of the cultists and the void. And once returning and speaking with Mother Miyun, the very same group appears as we discuss the rising levels of fatality within the profession. This time, however, there is no merry atmosphere among the group. Leovine shouts at Edda that the loss of Avir, who is indeed missing from their ranks, is entirely her fault due to a slow healing time. Edda retorts, stating that she tried her best to weave the spell, but Avir moved too far away. Pio Reo, frustrated and furious, curses the party and wishes to never see them again. Leovine chimes in again, telling Edda she never liked her and only stuck around for her healing, of which she could apparently be barely competent, then yells at her to get rid of Revere's head, which Edda appears to be carrying. Edda sobs with grief, begging the late Revere for her forgiveness. Although this seems the end of this group of adventurers, Edda finally strikes up the courage to speak with the Warrior of Light directly after their defence of Copperbell Mines from the Giants. She tells us her name, and that although we may not know her, she was once an adventurer herself, though admittedly not a very good one. She tells us of her party's defeat in Gridania, and the loss of their leader. We learn that Avir was meant to wed Edda in the spring, and apparently held us in very high esteem, singing our praises night and day, swearing to become just like us. Edda claims she is inspired over our deeds and achievements, tells us that she will return to her birth village to begin her training once more, and wishes to know our name, but she pledges to never forget. Between this conversation and the current times of the Warrior of Light, much has happened within the world. The Warrior of Light has defeated the Primals, as well as dealing a blow to the Empire at the Praetorium. With all the notoriety, the Warrior of Light is known across the land, as opposed to the few areas where their exploits originally held stories. We are surprised, therefore, to find Pio Reo, white as a sheet and paranoid, along the streets of Ulda. Shocked to see us, he introduces himself and asks us if we remember Edda, and goes on to explain that Avir had passed in the Tamtara Deepcroft, tearing the group apart. But fate had it that one day, a letter arrived from Edda herself, with an invite to her wedding. Happy an occasion as it might be, Pio Reo noted that the groom's name was Avir, the very gladiator they lost in their final adventure. Edda mentions in the letter that Leovine also agreed to attend, and Pyo reveals that she joined the Scions of the Seventh Dawn not too long after the falling out of their group. Putting two and two together, we tell Pyo Reo that Leovine would most likely be buried in the lichyard of the Church of Saint Adama Landama, as they fell during the attack on the Waking Sands by the Imperials. Confusion rising in the Lalafell, he asks that we visit Leovine's grave to confirm her death for himself, and to pay his respects as a fellow adventurer. Visiting the Lichard, a shocking turn of events unfolds. Leovine's grave, while still where she was buried, is completely empty, devoid of body and all. 
Bayreo explained that while the group of adventurers was a means to riches and fame for the majority, Edda thought of it as her life. And while Edda blamed herself for Revere's death and the rest agreed, they all knew at heart that the blame was equal. Cursing his past mistakes, Bayo decides to attend the wedding of Edda to see if he can't return the girl to her senses, and asks that we attend also, should the worst come to worst. Arriving at the Tamtara Deepcroft, we speak with Huguemont, still standing guard outside the entrance. He explains that not a moment ago, a Lalafelon Thaumaturge went inside, along with a Hyur lady dressed all in white, and while she was full of smiles, the Lalafel was stiff as a board. The Warrior of Light gives chase into the Deepcroft once more, to attend the accursed wedding and reunion of the adventuring group. Entering the Deepcroft, we can see a change in the hue of the large open area, much more red tinted with the channeling energies yellow-green as opposed to purple. As we proceed through the area, we can find along the way torn folios and letters, seemingly written by Edda. The first paper concerns the Warrior of Light, us, as Edda explains to Avir that she met with us, and although we said few words, she found the courage to face the future for having met us. The odd thing about this is that by this point, Avir had already passed. Defeating several Banemites inhabiting the tunnels, we encounter three Void Scent, two of them being demonic pawns and the other a large Volariga. Defeating these enemies removes the seal and allows the party further into the place. We defeat another set of demons controlled by a gargoyle, after which we find another folio, this one expounding upon Avir and Edda's first outing together, where they visited the shores of Mordona sat upon the edge of Lake Silvertear, sharing an intimate moment together beneath the sunset. After this, we enter the tunnel proper, where we happen across the interring chamber, along with a single foe facing us. Leovine, Edda's other companion, stands facing us, clearly possessed of something sinister, and she attacks the party. During the fight, Leovine casts several archer abilities at party members, including a large cone-shaped quickknock, as well as a rotting arrow, a large area attack on a single party member. This arrow is useful in defeating the several zombies she summons to attack party members, as the arrow completely destroys them in one attack. A notable thing about the zombies within this fight is that each of them are named after a different wedding attendant, whether it be bridesmaids or the best men for Edda's wedding. Upon defeat, Leovine utters a final comment on Edda, as she was convinced of her weirdness from the beginning. Proceeding forward, we unleash a spirit from a coffin known as Dantelion, and after its defeat can head down the adjacent corridor, but not before examining the third note left by Edda. This note speaks of Avir's apparent pale skin while enduring the heat of Thanalan. Edda seems to suggest that they move towards the cooler climate of Coerthus. We find yet more void sent along the hall, along with more side rooms that must be cleared of the hostile presence in order to proceed. In the left hand room we find another torn folio, and this letter contains comments regarding Avir's lack of body. It seems as though Edda was dedicated to discovering a means to return Avir's spirit to a body, as so to wed him once he becomes whole. Heading down the corridor to the right hand room, we can see blood written on the walls, as well as another coffin and a new folio. Examining the folio, we can see that Edda wishes truly to make the renewed Avir similar to us, by pairing a strong body with an equally strong soul and to do so, she must harvest many weaker souls for her ritual. Once we defeat the final coffin spirit, we reach the tomb of King Galvanth the Dominator, where we find Pyo Reo apparently awaiting us. As we approach however, he freezes up due to a spell, and the summoned Dullahan must be kept away from the Lalafell. As we attack the Void Scent, many orbs come forth from the nearby Void Portals, and these must be absorbed by the party so that Pyo Reo can survive. Upon defeat, Pyoreo escapes the bind and flees the deep rift. The party can proceed through the nearby ethereal flow. We appear in another part of the tunnel, and nearby to our entrance lies another torn folio. 
we discover that Edda has been using the bodies lying in the deep croft to make Avir well again. And here we see the idea of the wedding unfold, as in the letter, she suggests inviting her old friend to partake, claiming that they should jump for joy at the chance to part with their souls. Proceeding down the final corridor, the enemies take a shift towards abominations, all spare and mutilated body parts discarded by Edda in her desperate attempts to revive her beloved. We arrive at the outskirts of Eternal Calm, where many more void scents channel towards the orb of energy in the centre of the area. Defeating the Pisco Demon along with the several discarded bodies, yet more failures of the ritual, we finally come face to face with the Bride herself. You can see that the energy orb in the center here was made to resummon the lost Avir, but not his stout human self. As the shroud fades, a void scent descends in his place, filled with the weak souls Edda mentioned in her letters. Edda herself approaches Avir and embraces him, exclaiming that their friends have arrived to give a gift of souls, and that even the Warrior of Light made an appearance. Approaching the arena, we can hear Edda's eerie weeping and occasional laughter, and we begin to tackle the void scent Avir. During the fight, many more portals appear at the edge of the arena, each spewing forth void scent which target the party, as well as the grooms to be. Around the centre of the arena, we can see several dark runes spelling the word Avir upon the floor. As the fight proceeds, the grooms to be attempt to reach Edda in the centre of the arena, and if successful, a rune lights up. Throughout the fight, Edda will herself cast Red Wedding, damaging the party more heavily the more runes light up from the zombies. After dealing with the grooms and the returning void scent, Avir falls once and for all. After this, we see Edda in shock at the second loss of her beloved, and backing away slowly, her robes catching fire from the ring of candles, she stumbles and falls backwards into the abyss, another odd smile apparent on her face. And although their duty is indeed complete, the Warrior of Light appears solemn and upset. After this, we reconvene with Pyo Reo outside the Deepcroft, who regrets what the group became, and begins to explain that he is hanging up his title of adventurer, when he notices something in the corner of his eye. Standing at a nearby Brazier, a terrifying, ghostly look about her, stands Edda, a horribly vengeful look in her eyes, and as she gives a horrific smile, Pyo Reo's face fills with terror, and he screams and flees the catacombs once and for all. Upon completion of the dungeon and the resulting reappearance of Edda, her ghost can very, very rarely be found in the main city-states of Eorzea. The appearance is rare enough that I could not find her even while sitting idle in her spawn locations, but her appearance suggests that she is mournful of her actions, her head towards the floor, wearing still the same white robes as ever. Sometime later, the Warrior of Light finds themselves following rumours of a certain complex of caverns found within South Shroud and mysteriously change appearance and layout with every visit, and due to the nature of the aggressive spirits found there, being those of lost men and women, the caves gain the name of the Palace of the Dead. Seemingly innocuous at first, as the Warrior of Light and their companions traverse the shifting tunnels, we see glimpses of a mysterious figure wearing a black gothic outfit with high heeled boots and familiar looking hat. At the end of each set of ten floors, the figure appears and seems to be observing us. After the 40th floor, however, we finally see a full view of them, and as you may have surmised, the figure turns out to be Edda, seemingly possessed, an eye patch covering her right eye and what seems to be a miniature version of the voice center on her shoulder. At the end of the 50th floor, Edda herself awaits us as the palace's guardian, and we do battle with her once again. She announces that unwanted visitors have intruded upon the place, and she wishes to turn us back to the entrance. The arena we fight her in is similar to the one inside the Tamtaro Deepcroft, the candles lining the edge and the runes near the centre. During the fight, Edda casts several wedding related mechanics, in health forcing the party close or far, old feet forcing us to look away, 
and Black Honeymoon, causing damage to the party based on the floor ruined active. Upon her defeat once more, the dark form of Edda vanishes, to be replaced once again with her white garb. She is happy to see us, stating her journey as an adventurer began anew, but appears confused as to how she arrived within the palace, remembering a robed figure. She then vanishes, her soul more at peace with the life she lived. With Edda's disappearance, she leaves behind an old jeweled ring. The Warrior of Light collects the ring and exits the Palace of the Dead, where after a conversation with the Wood Wailers, Balan hails us and gives mention of a drink-heavy Lalafell that visited Buscaron's druthers in recent days, always giving mention of his dead friends and even mentioning us by name. Balan asks us to meet with him to detach him from the tavern if nothing else, and upon arrival we discover this Lalafell to be none other than Payo Reo once again. Recognising us, he explains how since the journey into the Tamtara Deepcroft, his thoughts have constantly been upon Edda and his experience, and the Warrior of Light explains the sighting of Edda once again, and holds out the ring for Payo Reo to examine. He recognises it at once as her engagement ring, which she forever kept safe while travelling as an adventurer. Heading outside to the nearby bridge, Payo Reo explains further about his dreams, of Edda's horrible ghostly smile, and the abomination of Veer became. In the dream, Edda tells the Lullafell that they wish to return home, but the latter was unsure how to assist, considering a remembrance service but not having any keepsakes or their bodies to bury. The sight of Edda's ring, however, sparked a new idea in Pyo Reo, and he explains that Avir's ring meant missing before their fateful journey into the Deepcroft, but in a more light-hearted way. Avir and Pyo Reo had been drunk up to their eyes, and Avir fell into the river where his gauntlets dislodged themselves along with the engagement ring. The Lalafo asks us to help make things right, and we begin a search in the river for Avir's missing keepsake. We find the gauntlet and ring a little ways downstream, and though the gauntlets are rusted through, the ring is in good condition. Returning to Payo Reo, he exclaims that the ring is indeed correct, and begins to ponder a place as to where the couple can be finally put to rest, deciding eventually on the area around Summerford Farms. We meet the Lullifer one final time upon a cliff overlooking a view of Limsa Laminsa, and with prayers offered to the lost pair, and the rings themselves buried as a memory of their lives, Pio Reo turns to us and wholeheartedly thanks us for ridding him of his overwhelming guilt and his nightmarish dreams of Edda. And as the Warrior of Light turns to leave the site, Edda's voice speaks out, Thank you. And the Warrior of Light turns to face the Laminsa skyline, smiling all the while. And that brings an end to the story and lore of the hard mode version of the Tamtara Deepcroft, and by extension, Edda Pureheart herself. A tragic tale, its beginning seen after our second foray into the dungeons of Eorzea, ending with a descent into madness and a final reunion of the couple where they first fell in love. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Final Fantasy XIV lore. And I'll see you next time for the hard mode version of the Stone Vigil.